Because I actually think we've got the first four now, four days like, oh yeah, this is going to come together. So I want to tell you about it. Uh, because that's also how we're going to attract the people that are going to help us. So the STEAM Camp business model and the STEAM Camp curriculum. Yeah, go to STEAM Camp curriculum and Got go it. to overview schedule narrative. On it. So it's a sense, so we got four days and let me tell you about it. So I was thinking, okay, so we got to take products home. We want to have people develop something that they get a wide skill set that it could apply literally to like 80% of Amazon. So I was thinking about that because we're, we're, we're about open source product development. We're going to have to create people's livelihoods. We're all going to work on it together. The, the incentive is that the ninth day of the Steam Camp, we're actually going to have a business day. It's going to be product demo of the thing we developed. And we're also going to do stuff maybe like talk about how do you embed like a storefront either on a wiki or on your website or something, whatever, like a little bit of business stuff. Um, okay, first four days because that's what prepares you for the generalist OSE tool set. Day one, we're going to build a printer, the simple one. So it takes about half the effort of the big one. We can do that in a few hours uh, from a kit. Great. How many? How many hours? A few hours. Three hours. Okay. From a good kit. So that's I need to prepare that. So, so that means that we push the, the simple, D3D simple, There's just little details there. So um, basically, I want to make sure we're, that I'm understanding this. So we're not printing and building a 3d printer we're assembling a 3d printer from a kit that's already existing yeah okay great yep. and that and that simple kit uh let me just paste this link to you so just just to remind you that's what it looks like so in a d3d simple so we're going to build something like that all it is you can take a two by six two by eight as a platform and you have this is the simple one this thing looks awesome yeah it's simple it's um three axes so the three universal axes. Yep. You got a piece of wood for the base. You got a sliding platform on a on a bottom and another uh, ZX. You know, so three dimensions all together. Great. Um, these last few weeks, I've actually been exp like part of the production engineering. What I've been working on is wiring, because wiring is you know it's a pain in the ass. Um, so I actually developed a way to. I mean, it's simple stuff. Basically, make a plug for the head. So it's quickly removable and go back to the magnet so we can replace the heads. So day one, we build a printer. Day two, we take that uh, reddish printer head off and we put on yep. a pen, a simple plotter. Now, why is that important? Because if, you, if instead of that bed, you've got a, a copper clad circuit board, that's just a blank copper clad board, right? When you draw it with a permanent marker, you can actually draw the circuit, and if you put it into a solution, you can etch it. So with this device, what I'm telling you is you have the ability to make up to like microcontrollers right there. Oh my gosh! On this device, so the, this device. the yellow, the yellow highlighted piece would be a board. Yep, exactly. And I've seen Fun. that. There's a guy I was looking on YouTube. A guy just did that magically. So he can do, you know, like the little Arduino that controls this thing. Yeah. You can draw that out, put it into solution, and take it out five minutes later, and you've got that board that you can now populate with the components to make the controller that actually runs this thing. Crazy. That is so awesome. So that's day two. Perfect. So now we covered 3D printing, and we covered the making of circuits using the same device. So day three, I was going to go with um, the br brushless electric motor, so now we use the 3D printer to print our motor shape. We're going to stick magnets in there and little wires. And with a circuit maker, we're going to make a little controller for that brushless. It's a brushless motor. It means it doesn't have brushes to commutate. The commutation, you know, like the skipping of positive and negative, that, th yeah. that stuff is done electronically through the microcontroller. So we're going to build the little, little controller and we're going to 3D print the motor. So now we've got the ability with the tools that we built before to go the next step, which is the motors. So that's day three, I'm thinking. Well, what do you do with a motor? Well, people have done these kinds of open source motors to, to even run like drones. So it's actually, there's prior art where people did uh, open source 3D printed motors that were usable for drones. But for me, the, the motor could easily go, so take now take off the pen plotter and put a motor on that XYZ axis. And what does that make it? That makes it into a small mill. 
So then you can start milling, like you can do aluminum, you can't do steel because steel is too hard, but you can mill aluminum with the device, that, with the triple axis there. So you can do things like the little, uh, like for the extruder, you can actually mill the part, because the extruder essentially is a stepper motor and some other metal parts that feed filament and then it gets heated through a heater element but you can actually mill that's the red, that's the red piece yeah okay yeah that's the extruder it's basically a stepper motor it's got the shaft on it and it's got like a drive cog that it's like a wire feeder on a welder i don't know if you did you ever weld yeah i do yeah mig weld yep uh it's essentially a wire feeder the wire is plastic instead of metal and then it's got a heater element, like the nozzle instead is a heater element instead of uh, an electrical conduct. Conduct. It's a uh, heater. So it's like this is essentially like a wire feeder, except you're feeding plastic. So, okay, take that off. Yeah. Well, okay. So we're saying we. I'm, I'm telling you that we can build that extruder, those metal extruder parts with that mill. And <laughs> to get there. It's going to take a couple of steam camps. Like, we're not going to get that the first time. But, but it's, it's capable of milling aluminum. Aluminum is pretty soft. Yeah. Uh, and you can go pretty, so, pretty slowly. So, you can ha so right there, we've already went to three powerful CNC machines that if you understand how you build them from scratch at a small level, you can definitely scale them up. So, we covered, at this point, the ability to do up to small milling with things that we have largely built ourselves. So now on day four, I say, okay, let's let's get some battery packs since, um, I don't know if you know, but for example, the computer I'm using, the Dell Precision M6500, uses the same kinds of batteries. Like, did you know that the cordless drill used those circular uh, 18650? So yeah. let me show you. Uh, have you ever seen the, let me just uh, get a 18650. I have, I have a couple cordless drills. So you're talking about the top and the bottom of it. Right. But you know what's inside of it? I will in one second. There it is. Oh my That's gosh. That's inside of it. I did not know that. And I did not know that either, actually. And I did not know that those cells are also in a battery pack in my computer. Like, holy shit. That, that is really cool. So, so we're so saying these are, this is called these are 18650. These are all, so it's loaded with 18650 rechargeable batteries. Yep. And this is the battery pack for the cordless drill. That's the battery <laughs> pack for a computer for a lot of things so when you build this now so on day on day four they're going to be making those exact batteries while you buy the batteries the trick is put a battery pack around that right oh, it's got leads and all we're not going to make these cells now that's that's china that, that's okay for now uh, so you're going to you're going to buy the cells but yep. you're going to build packs yep and did you know that the tesla car uses these cells i did not yes I it's got a, yeah. thousands of these just wired up together it weighs like a thousand pounds or whatever but it's the same thing like wow crazy uh, so we're talking about all kinds of things to electric vehicles and so forth so that universal battery pack is is there now what else can you do with a battery pack a very relevant thing is called a cordless welder do you know those exist I did not know. Um, I've never seen. Let me, let me never, show you one on the wiki. Cordless welder. Never seen that. I was like, holy cow, this is amazing. Um, <clears throat> okay, take Ready Welder for example. This is uh, ReadyWelder.com. Here, let me show you that. So there you go. Take a look at Ready Welder. Wait, where is that? Uh, ReadyWelder.com. That thing, oh wait, where do you see it? Forever to load. There it is. Uh, I can't really see it there, but let me give you a better link because you can't really see that's a cordless one. Um, yeah, this one has a cord. Well, the, let me see, hold on. Okay, this is what I mean. Okay, let's take a look at this other one. Uh, it's going to have the... Okay, take a look at this one. That's that's what the whole package looks like. It's a charger. Basically, that box, it's got those batteries inside of them. Okay, so the big box that stands... Okay, the, 
with the box that's off to the left that says front line on it. Fronius on the, or, the thing on the right hand side. The, okay, the thing on the right hand side has the batteries in it. Yeah, you it's actually, just basically a big box full of those ba batteries. Well, but guess battery. what? If we um, the numbers work out so thousand dollars, holy crap! Oh yeah, get a load of that. So how about that for a product, right? So holy crap. okay, so on day four. Uh, which is part of what I want to do for the design challenge. Make a st stackable battery pack, one that you can take one and you can plug them into each other for higher current. Okay, so we've got a steam camp. We have 12 people that made a battery pack made of six cells. Well, 10 times 6 is 60 cells, and that's enough for like 10 minutes of welding. Yeah. So we do a very simple control. Because now if you're at, so say you're at 20 volts because the, the batteries are low voltage. All you need is a very simple arduino based controller to turn that into like a use the same okay so the universal controller on the 3d printer it's just that control panel that's you've got a little screen you got a little knob you've got the microcontroller that reprogrammed can control the welder so what you what i told you is like 80 percent of the stuff on amazon we got in four days that's fantastic. So you've got a construction set for the control panel, constru construction set for the universal motion, you've got a constru construction set for 3D printing, making motors and scaling them, making battery packs and scaling them, making circuits. So this is just crazy, and I think this is going to be a killer. So this is day four, uh, four is days. This, what, but this is not a camp you run before, correct? No, this is not, but it became the obvious outcome after I did all this bullshit I did last time. This is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I think this is going to kill it. I do too. Totally do. You talk about empowerment. Man, I mean, this is this is out of control. Uh, I mean, I think we can blow everything out of the water. Like, we, you know, I've implied this stuff. Oh, yeah, we actually do real stuff. Well, here we're teaching students to gain real skills, building things that actually work, that in themselves can be turned into kits and products. And that leads you to the ability to make scale things that are larger, bigger. So, you know what? I'm going to completely distract us for a second, but just to put it in the back of your head and let's leave it there. Um, one of the things that I read about regularly is the um, lack of technology that exists in batteries as far as advancements. We're becoming more and more dependent on batteries, and yet they um, essentially decay over time. Even the rechargeable ones, they're hard on the environment. They don't mm -hmm. recycle well. Mm -hmm. It would be really interesting once we are successful with our incentive challenge to come up with an incentive challenge to redesign batteries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought that, and I, I share that with you. They're unfortunately a uh, very destructive thing right now. Yeah. Um, and like whatever, like Elon Musk is talking about, like the future electrical. I don't think so. There's not enough lithium. Lithium is a scarce resource right now. We've got like 200 years left, and if the battery usage increases like it's planned, we're talking about decades before all the lithium is gone. Uh, you can re recycle it, but it's terribly like destructive. Like whenever you mine it. So, yeah. so two things. One. Is that during the design challenge I actually wanted to to as part of it since we're open sourcing since we're making this transparent we're gonna have to show that so I'm gonna have to go to China and go to visit those mines and so forth in the supply chains because that's something we need to be aware of when we're talking about designing the the ecological cordless drill so that's one side the other side is I think there's a solution I, I think the solution for what's after batteries I think it's hydrogen and hydrogen is um, like to explain the main theory behind it. So hydrogen right now, people make a big deal out of in the sense that it's impossible to do right now because the fuel cells are high tech, very expensive. Now they can come down in price and maybe we'll get them. But see, we don't need them. Uh, you can burn hydrogen as a gas in, in an engine. So that's a solution for today. You, you're not as efficient, but if you're generating solar hydrogen with wind power or solar that's abundant, then I think that 
is still extremely ecological. Now, when you say that to somebody, to an engineer, they're going to be like, what are you, crazy? That's really inefficient. Well, they're just looking from their little viewpoint. But I, I think it's extremely efficient systems-wise to go with hydrogen that's burnt in regular engines. And that's something we could do like right now. Uh, after this challenge succeeds, as you said, yes, the next things I was thinking of things like a tractor, but with that tractor we might say, hey, we're actually going to put a hydrogen engine on it, you know? So, so yes, I agree with you, and, and I see the, the pain point there. It is there that we're going to have to fix that, and that's and we're going to fix that pretty quickly. So, so I want to make sure I understood that, what you just said. Is so rather than focusing on how to make batteries in a different way, you're saying let's design products that consume a fuel that isn't necessary to include a battery. Right. And on based on advanced technology that you basically miniaturize that that engine, yeah, I mean they have tiny model engines. Uh, there's gonna have to be innovation to make that thing like not loud, because yeah, because that's internal combustion engines. You can do that through heat other heat engines called Stirling engines. So there's other technologies Which to do that. But you could do that for a tractor. How would you make a hydrogen engine for a Rail. Yeah, uh, it has to be a, just a tiny engine. That's the that's the problem. So you're getting really into the micro miniaturization side. Yeah. But there are things like I don't know if you've ever heard of micro electromechanical devices. There are things. No. There's technologies that I don't think the making a small engine is going to be prohibitive. We can probably do it. Now, the other thing I will say, if we're using small thing like, if we're really not doing things like cars that require a ton of batteries, but doing things like drills that require just one battery. Uh, I think it's sustainable for some time, but but I would say like from the get go, it's like no, definitely you don't want to go to like cars with batteries. That's crazy. But for a cordless drill, it maybe maybe we'll find out that it's too hard to do the hydrogen on that or, or some other technology. It might be that we, we do end up with it or that we, do, you know, people develop whatever like carbon nanotube batteries or whatever that are completely sustainable and not made of uh, scarce resources. So, so yeah, but I think uh, the bottom line is from our takeaway here is if we develop a truly collaborative method where we're like thousand X the innovation, yes, we can get this, to those solutions pretty readily. I'd say, because yeah. right now, I mean, if you think about it, like, okay, some guy in a lab makes a puff, like an MIT lab guy makes a puff piece. Oh, we developed this new new technology, and I like to make fun of uh, the like the academia because a lot of times what they do is because people don't understand it, they will like, oh, we just invented this and that, and a lot of times it's really fluff. It's stuff that already existed, and they're really like trying to milk publicity. So. Imag and, and those guys are all competing with that next university and that, and that other group. and, that, and that. So imagine you put all of those together for a thousand X the innovation. Yeah, we can really blow away through any technical challenges. So that's why I think like I think right now we're in a stone age of innovation. And I see that, of course, with open source ecology that we haven't been able to speed up our development. But yeah, I'm getting, you know, hopefully we're getting around that. So yeah, that's, uh, does that all make sense? Yep, it does. It does. And so the, uh, okay, now let's go back onto our agenda. Yeah. So I day love, four. I love your team camp. Curriculum. Man, this I is going to. So, what are we going to build day five through nine? Uh, so that's up. So I was thinking um, the three things we have on a plate right now was, um, let's see. Uh, so if you go to day five, nine, just scroll down that page. So I'm still thinking Raspberry Pi tablet, cordless drill, aerial drone. Those are all pretty nice projects, I think. Uh, and each of them, what do you think of that? I love, let's see, day um, five through nine, Raspberry Pi tablet, make a fully functional computer tablet from a touch screen. That, okay, that's freaking incredible. I love that. Um, cordless drill, I like that. And aerial drone, I love that. Okay, and aerial drone, what's cool about it, uh, using our modularity stuff, uh, use your cell phone as the controller. I've, I've seen an open source project that does that. So it's like all, there's so much prior art in there. And none of these projects are like really refined. But we can probably, uh, through getting these people together, we can refine these projects. They're just killer good products and just exciting and educational and scalable. 
Uh, what would it. you what would you suggest instead of the cordless drill something that you love again uh what I'm about looking... we, we did talk about the vacuum robot i love that okay so maybe replace cordless drill with the vacuum robot and there and, there, and I'll, I'll give you what just is my marketing mind kicking in um all three of those products a raspberry pi tablet a um a robot vacuum and an aerial drone are also great gift items oh yeah oh yeah 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 oh there you go that's that's like, true that's true and you talk about one of the most unique gifts you can give somebody is something that they're going to go no way you made this nice nice Whereas the cordless drill, that would be only for like my wife and, and mechanical people. Right. And those are more, in, those are considered more industrial than high tech. And you're talking about a tablet, a robotic vacuum and an aerial drone are considered high tech. Nice. Whereas okay. the cordless drill, though there is a lot of tech in it, is not, it's, you know, not. And fortunately, you know, even if you want to go on the internet yourself, look up open source Raspberry Pi tablet, vacuum robot, aerial drone, and you'll find loads. So there's a lot of prior art, and just like with open source projects, you know, the disease of open source projects, very few of them ever get anywhere to a very refined state, and those that do get proprietary. So here we can address that. Um, we can refine these products, make them really good and open source. Okay, take me to day, no, um, day nine, okay, yeah. and walk me through the business model stuff. Yeah, I haven't thought much about day nine, but all I know is that, okay, we're talking about, this is 80% of Amazon. We got to be freeing people up. We got to be creating entrepreneurs who produce these things. So let's have some enterprise training. And that would be first, like we were building something for those four of the five days, product demo day, right? So people show off their products and then we go into like one thing that i think about a lot is the called the open source everything store so let me uh, show you. I, I lost you. you you i've lost your video for a while but i also lost your audio there so i asked the question i didn't hear the answer okay yeah so um day nine day nine first of all we have product demos yeah so pe this is people basically showing everybody and demoing what they made yep and okay. It's probably like the way I'd like to do the, the, the complete project, just like in the first four days on a battery pack, what we've seen with the battery pack is that we can stack a bunch of them, a thing that each team made. So there's 12 participants, 12 battery packs are made. We simply plug them into each other because we designed them to be pluggable into each other, stackable. We designed them stackable so you can run a welder from it. So now you're seeing, holy cow. Uh, now, like metaphorically speaking, we're bigger than ourselves because we collaborated with the other guys. We just use their products and we work together. So that's really good. And I think we can actually do the same thing with the electric motor. We can stack a bunch of them next to each other on the same axis to make a more powerful motor. We can design it that way. So cool. Okay. So for day nine, um, maybe the product demo will be something, but maybe we can design it that somehow we we combine like the product demo will focus maybe on combining the things like i don't know how you i don't, I don't know like maybe we we introduce a it's, it's a product demo to begin with but but maybe we introduce an element of how we're combining the products into something bigger okay anyway that, don't know much more about that well one of the ways you could do it is could you create something that if, if the product is a drone for example could oh, you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, make it like a super drone because they're all connected. Absolutely. Right. There you go. There you go. So you can now have a drone that like is a real cargo drone because if you have 10 drones together, they can lift like a kilo or two. Yes. Nice. And we can carry like, I don't know. It's, a great, it's a great metaphor for what's possible when you collaborate versus things you can't accomplish on your own. Yeah, and I think this is totally, like with our brand, we should focus on designing elements like that. Yeah, awesome. So after that, is the... Open so I, one thing I want to just go back on days one through eight. Um, it feels like a lot, Is it? And, and I don't have any context to this, so you can just do a simple, nope, it'll be fine, is, is, is good enough for me. The I want it, One of the things that will cause you to lose people if they can't complete each of these pieces in the one day you've allocated. Yes. So for, for said another way, if they can't, finish assembling their 3D printer, if they can't make a circuit board, they can't make a brushless electric motor, 
battery pack packs in the day you allocate it. It has to be comfortable that that, that people will all everybody will finish. Exactly, and that okay. was the for, that's uh, when I talked to you about two months ago. That's the thing that scared the shit out of me. Yeah. But now I'm not anymore because we're we're just gonna say okay we're gonna get six people working on that, six people. So so like I did a lot for example on a 3D printer so I can I can really design how to yeah that will go together in like say three hours. Um, but for the other guys say say the electric motor well I haven't built one of those I was hoping actually William would have done that but we you know, he didn't get that far on it himself. But now we're saying okay we've got the guy that's the source of that and he he's does that in his sleep so we get him and then he collaborates and. The, the challenge there will be to, because a lot of people don't think about the rapid build like we do. So yeah. the challenge will be, yes, we're going to have to have them do that, refine it, refine the distributed production engineering to the point that, yeah, you can just put it together because it's so easy. I mean, there's definitely good precedent for kits that allow that, like the rapid build. So we're going to have to invest extra up front to get those well-refined kits that there's no guesswork like just super crazy efficient just yeah. like on a printer i mentioned about the wiring like the control panel is kind of bothering me a little bit it's like oh man some of this wiring is too hard so i redid it um and like way simplified it and you and uh, just from my experience when you do that i mean i don't know when you hit the limit of simplification you can keep going and keep going for like ever but that but the point is Yes, with the best people, we're going to have to put in the resources, put in the, <clears throat> the effort to get to that level of refinement. Exactly. Now, for example, just, you know, something that you could understand pretty easy. Let me show you this example, how <clears throat> I can tell you that day two we've got in a bag. So let me show you this. And this, this is the kind of thinking you need to have to say, oh, okay, we're going to nail the battery pack and the printer and the electric motor just the same way. So let me show you this um, circuit plotter. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so take a look at... Uh, it's on the wiki. <clears throat> right, right, there it is. No. PCB I plotter. <clears throat> yep. All it. it is is a pen. That's your new head. Instead of the three print head, Oh my gosh, this is brilliant. That's it, man. That so is brilliant. How long, okay, so how long is it going to take you to put that together? An hour, two hours. And then if the head is truly interchangeable with magnets, bam, one second to put it on the printer. One connector. That's why I made the head disconnectable. Brilliant. This that, is so that thing is open source, so I'll talk to the guy. Uh, what's his, whatever his name is. There. Yeah, I mean, you can. You, I see his. I see his face. <laughs> yep. That's freaking awesome. I love it. And and if you see the similarity, see what he's doing. See the rods. That's yep. his version of the universal axis, and you see it's not so universal. All the three axes are different. Right. Uh, well, the two axes. Because really, you really need just X, Y, and a little bit in a Z. But this thing works like really well. Like you can make microcontrollers with it <clears throat> so 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 think about that to, for him to get to that level like where it actually all works and it's all accurate it took him a bunch of time <clears throat> but that's exactly what we do we just refine it and get there i'm trying to do, i'm going to try to do something for you <clears throat> that's the end of the martian you don't have to watch it now that's for later it's for later? Yeah, that's the end of the Martian. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> now he's schooling people. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Um, all right, so... All right, so that's the agenda. Day 9, talk to me about the business model. So we've yes. got demo day, we've got the demos, the product demos, now you're going to talk about a business model. Yeah, so we're getting people to think about, hey, we can now design products, why not get economic freedom if we produce them? Because after all, all of life is like we, you know, a lot of our cost of living is still very material. So let's nail it. And, and then use that as a chance to pursue self-determination. So build in that that whole big picture to it 
Okay, let me just do one thing here. Um, so I've thought about this thing of the open source everything store. So basically like Amazon, but it's a collaborative development platform. So it's just a name for the idea of we're collaboratively developing things. And here's the link. Open source everything store. So you can click on that link. <clears throat> Okay. And there's a go to down to the document, but basically what we can do, what we can do is develop a template that you can embed in a website or even on a wiki. So you just Steve edited your wiki for the first time. Well, you can actually paste HTML code into the wiki as well. So you can say paste the whole code that has your product and you can start your own product pages on a wiki or on your website or anywhere. But the idea there is so one, we have the product. But two, you can not only buy the product, <clears throat> but you can buy its production. So, so I'm thinking the unique thing, like on Amazon, you can buy products, but you cannot buy the business to make that product. So here we'll just take that one step because we're all open source, buy the production. So that could be a link to our enterprise training or materials to, so you can buy like either training, an ebook or whatever. So, uh, it's just a template for so so we can create these templates so this is now gets into like web coding or like app coding where we can devote a little bit of time to spin up a storefront so you can embed your paypal pay button or like a shopping basket button in there too and there you go uh send this to your friends buy my uh drill buy my uh drone so i think a little bit of work on <clears throat> on a collaborative store that all the information on that store, like all the production engineering there is all open source. So anyone can now start their own website or productive activity with the open source everything store. So at least introduce that concept and start building a community of people that actually do that. And then we'd have to have some standards and so forth, but it's something to develop fully. But that's just a rough idea. Does that make sense? It does. Amazon won't let your products go up on their site unless there's proof that they like that they're valid so we would have to think through how do how does somebody who wants to sell their own version of a drill get approved to sell that drill on amazon so we'd have to think through how we can help them with that um so like for example somebody could send a you know a, a piece of crap in, in a box and, and instead of a drill they could send a drill that doesn't work yeah. they could send it you know, they can send parts for someone to assemble a drill when people think they're getting a drill. And so Amazon, because their brand associated with the transaction, is going to want to make sure that the products actually are as represented. Yeah, so I think that's where the whole standards and licensing, like the standards organization part of our work, like for the cordless yeah. drill, we're going to have to get some certifications or standards, both internal and external, so the quality control this is the whole part about distributed quality control yeah so osc would have to probably function as the quality control mechanism probably people would have to submit a sample to us and or then, people or like we have to figuring this out yeah i mean with the people yeah we have to develop it but yeah it's, it's just uh, it's another element to develop now steve you're saying okay that's going to amazon but here I'm thinking no, like before you go to Amazon, like out of this workshop, you could just embed this on your website. You know, and then it's up to you. you can do that on your own. Do it on your own. Yeah, I mean, there there is not, there are no you know that's left by or beware. That's why things like Amazon exist. Um, well, there is but a, that's where in that template there, that there's um, a um, there's an assumption that there's some quality assurance being done. When you yes, Amazon. yes, 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 absolutely. It's not buying on a website. So before we have the this developed, yes, it's it's like okay, it's, adoption will be low, but it's just something you can do, like even just for your friends. But also, like what you can do is start putting in, like why I like the wiki is that you can embed into it, like all these different elements. Like for example, if you want product rating, you can get like a rating plugin, which actually is found within Discourse, that form software I mentioned to you, that's got like reputations, like we talked about a little bit last time. Form software, the one that we want to use, which is open source, it also has a rating plugin. So you can embed, okay, rate this. So you can have build in transparency mechanisms and so forth. But yes, we'd have to build all that up. But what I'm trying to tell you is that 
we can start from the ground up and building up all these modular pieces that once we have the brand around the open source everything store and some certification around it and a community around it, it will become a trust, a more trusted thing. So we can build up to that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll just have to have processes in place where if you're getting feedback from consumers that it's that, that you, you can pull products off this or, or shut it down if your brand's on that. Yeah, yeah. This gets into now the execution details, which I'm not talking about. Yeah, there's going to be all kinds okay. of hell with distributed uh, quality That's control, fair. which nobody has done in the world, right? So this is you're, you're gonna If you're going to include this as part of day nine in your in your um, Steam count, then I think that we do have to think through the details. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we would for for it to add a lot of value, yes. But if you're going like if you're going the DIY route where you just have a template that looks attractive, that maybe has like the 3D image in there that you can rotate, you know, just a nice attractive product page. If you want to take that liability to take that for yourself, like put on your website for those people who are computer savvy, let's say, because a lot of computer programmers come to our workshop. Well, they can just go to Shopify and do and do it there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They can use anything. Um, but why, why I thought this would be cool is uh, like say, yeah, you can go to Shopify, but maybe it won't let you have some of the cool stuff that we want to do maybe like buy the production i don't know maybe you can do that on shopify but it just depends on how you build the site the yeah okay shopify provides a fairly basic template but lack it does allow you to customize and, and well maybe maybe that's our solution for now we go to shopify but but you know part of our pro, uh, problem statement is okay is shopify does that have open source code right because no Right. So, so the thing is, like about any of these platforms, there's a very clear, compelling reason why you don't want you do want to go open source is because of the transparency aspect. Like, for example, you don't know if Shopify is spying on you or doing something that that you don't know, because it's not open source code. It, they, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. I don't know if you think about it that way, but any proprietary software can be doing other things than appear to be doing right. I think that the purpose for going for something like Shopify would be able to use their cart. So yeah. you can actually transact business with simply a PayPal if that's all you had. Yes. Uh, and but the if there's a solve for that that's open source, then yeah. great. I, yeah. No, there are there are open source solutions for shopping baskets and all that. That's definitely like even in WordPress that has it like. A, yeah. WordPress has the store plugin and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways. But that's just a conceptually. Like th uh, I'm thinking, yes, it would be useful to start talking about enterprise because we really never emphasize that. Though in the last Steam camp, it was really encouraging how when I started to talk about, oh yeah, we're gonna franchise this, a couple of people lit up. It's like, what you're gonna, uh, uh, you're just gonna take a 12.5 percent cut? Like I, I mean, I just took that from you. Yeah. You're like yeah, I'll do it. <clears throat> And of course, and I, still like, I still like the twelve point five percent because it sounds like, well, two things. One is, is as much as it's a revenue source for us, we won't have any costs overtly associated with it. So yeah. over time, it becomes manageable for them, but so that they make enough money. But it's also revenue for us that allows us to do some things investment wise around OSC. But number two, I also like it because it'll actually encourage them to get more and more students. Um, because and run more and more camps because they're making the lion's share of the revenue, and the and that's what we need is access to those students for, as we get closer to the summer. Yeah, yeah. Um, do we want to go over the numbers for the Steam Camp? I do. 